All right. One of my subscribers wanted to know if I could make a quick video on the snow plow for Green Goose. So I'll talk a little bit about why I did it in the first place, and then I'll get into how I constructed it. So we built the Green Goose um, so that my wife and I could go to various uh, railroads like Train Mountain and Chiloquin, Oregon, and ride on their tracks for relatively little money. So you can buy a steam locomotive for you know, tens of thousands of dollars um, and even higher. And that's an expensive way to get into the hobby. And we just wanted a simple, something that was under five feet that could go in a pickup or an SUV and uh, be relatively cheap to, to haul around and enjoy. So Green Goose runs on two 12 volt batteries. It's got a 24 volt system. Um, I've added all kinds of things and you can see my other videos. I've got handbrake, I have you know, bell that I incorporated, uh, voltmeter, control panel, and then the remote here so you can stand up and do switching moves. Um, and that just has basic rheostat for throttle control, forward, backward, lights on and off, and klaxon horn. So this horn's a fake, but don't tell anyone. Um, so so that's that's the reason we got into this and what we found out when my wife and I are riding this tandem it's kind of like a snowmobile but you can see where the axle is so there's a fair amount of weight on that axle and it tends to make the front end a little bit light and I was finding that if I didn't lean a little bit on the footboard on some of the lumpier tracks sometimes the front truck could jump the rail so I needed a little extra weight and you can maximize adding extra weight and the effect that has by hanging it way out over the fulcrum. So that was the other reason. I, I just wanted, you know, a few extra pounds out front to help with that. And I'm not sure if it made an appreciable difference, but I really like how it looks. Um, the, the inspiration for the plow was, uh, of course, the, the Colorado steam locomotives. They put those on in the winter to move snow. And I just thought it, it gave the front a little bit more substantial look because that Model T sort of cowling or bonnet over the engine in my mind was a little disproportionate when you come back here and you look at the overall shape, especially with two people sitting on, I felt like it needed a little bit more, a little more mass up front to, just to give it that look. And I always like things with curves anyway. So um, I thought that plow would work well. So let's take a look at this thing up close and I'll show you what I did. You can, you might recognize the shape. They sell these little um, portable air tank cans or you know like a little horizontal cylinder i think they might be like five gallons capacity and you can fill them up on a compressor and then go fill your tires or go run a, a staple gun or something for a few minutes um anyway i found one laying around and i decided that that had the perfect contours to get the shape i needed so you can imagine if you unwelded these and put them together you'd almost have a complete air tank here's the air tank we're using it for an upholstery project but you can kind of get an idea of the size. Here's my hand for comparison. So something like that would work fine for a snowplow. You just want to find something with the right size and shape and contour that you like. So the way I started this is I took a piece of cardboard and I made a contour that I liked that kind of fit the, the shape and the dimension of this. And then I laid it over the air tank and made sure I had enough room on that tank to actually get the shapes that I needed the two halves had to had to come from that one tank so it just worked out and you can actually see there's a little bit of a radius here where this is beginning to form the bottom of the tank i just had enough material to get the width that i wanted um, and so that worked out really well so let's take this apart the way i've designed it here i continued this one by two square steel tubing forward right through the center of this plow so that allows me to relocate the coupler up front so I can still couple onto things and do switching with this plow in place. Or if I don't want that, I can pull it out. And I've got my ladder in the way. I can pull this out. It's like a great big drawbar that indexes in there. And I still have my little cow catcher there if I wanted to have a little extra protection from branches or things running underneath the locomotive. But you can see, let's set this down on the ground. I'll show you. There's the basic shape. So 
This just passes right through the center and then I welded some of this and just used plug welds to secure that. And that keeps it rock solid when it's in the coupler pocket up here. So that if you do hit pine cones or it catches on a little bit of gravel or something, it's really tied into the frame securely. And and basically, it's like a little bulldozer. You can, you can push a lot of stuff with this. I have not tried to push snow, though, because of the limited horsepower of my 20-amp motor. So um, maybe someday, if I'm brave enough or crazy enough to take this out in the snow, it might happen. But I wouldn't count on it anytime soon. So... So I've got we've we've got to the point where we've we've laid our cardboard over the um, the air tank, and I traced it with sharpie, and then I took a thin cutoff wheel and an angle angle grinder, and all the personal protective equipment, and cut that shape out. So I've got two halves. The next step was to figure out how I wanted to mount them, which was with this material here. So I lined it up on the track here with some pieces of wood to give me the correct offset height and of course you want to remember to account for suspension travel because uh, you don't want that thing to hang up on a rail joint or something so give yourself plenty of room. I lined everything up and I took a sharpie from the back side and traced out where this needed to be and so then from there I traced that out onto the metal and then I began sort of positioning these at the correct angle and clamping them to some metal bracing so that they would at least stay put while I welded. And you, you want to make sure you stand back and eyeball it, make sure it looks right to your eye. And then I began welding the reinforcements. So I just added bits of scrap that I had around. I thought this hook was kind of cool because if, you know, if you're going to put this on a scale train, you're going to have to lift it somehow. And so that gives you kind of a center line to lift from because, uh, you know, on full scale, these would be too heavy to lift. So um, I think I began at that point by joining the centers up with weld. And then I, I added a piece of angle steel down here for reinforcement. And then if we look at the bottom, I've got pieces of flat bar. Because this tank material is fairly thin, I've got some bracing here that goes up to the, the coupler or the drawbar area. And then where this passes through, I left the hole slightly oversized uh, just because I wanted to be able to make fine adjustments. And, and so I ended up patching that and then reinforcing it. And I wasn't so concerned about the welds looking pretty because the prototype would not be pretty. This thing, they would be absolutely beat from rocks and ice and everything. In fact, if if I was really thinking about it, I probably should have hit this with a hammer a few times and just given it that beat up look because snow plows just get abused. Um, so so I got those shapes going and pretty soon it all started coming together and you can kind of see the backsides of my welds there. Um, the extra bracing really does help. And then I think the last thing I did because these tanks are fairly thin is I took more flat bar and just contour it. This is, I think, one piece here, probably a joint and another piece, So I, and then just contour it with a flapper wheel and, and weld it in place. And that gives the whole thing some rigidity so that, you know, when, if you hit a little bit of gravel or something in a grade crossing, it's not gonna, not gonna bend it all out of shape. So that's kind of the basic idea behind it. Um, we're going to have this goose out at Train Mountain in a couple of weeks. Look forward to running it. It's uh, it's such an easy locomotive to run because of the electric power. You just turn the key on, set your direction, open up the throttle, and away she goes. And, um, this handbrake is really more meant for um, when you're doing operations like switching and you want to step off for a minute. Uh, it'll hold the position on a hill. It's it does work a little bit on like downgrades and things, but the the best braking is the regenerative braking. That's the most effective. So um, you know, in a panic stop, the the first thing I'm going to do is shut the throttle, and then dig my heels in and grab for this. Uh, but but it it is a nice feature to have, and I've got a video that that talks about that. Another thing I would recommend for any of you that are running these. Let me get this bonnet off of here. I added 
isolation switches. And just to be safe, because I'm not an electrician, I did it for both positive and negative wires going between the motor and the controller unit. And the reason that is, is because if you're running this with the power off, that motor is going to send electrons to the controller. And if you roll down a decent grade for any distance, it's probably going to burn that mo that controller up because there's nowhere for it to go. So a friend of mine had that happen. And after that, he said, you know, you you need some protection on your motor. So so I always keep those off. And then when I whenever I get on track and my, my brake is set, then I turn that that controller on so you can see my little happy goose there that was on ebay fun little find i needed some themes so you can see there's geese the the geese theme is everywhere even even the number one looks like a goose head this is a piece of rail mining rail eight pound rail and here's the angle so i i have i have this going into my basement i had a little chunk left over it's a handrail going downstairs into the basement i have a little chunk left over and it was kind of neat because the angle that I cut this on the saw left this kind of three-dimensional look. And so I just shaved off the head to make it look like a number one. Um, so we got that. And I, for the little goose, I epoxied a magnet there. So naturally, you're going to hit this thing and it's going to fall. But that magnet doesn't break. Other goose themes. Two eggs there. Another egg on the coupler pin. We've got Blue Goose shipping crate labels, some more Blue Goose. That hides the battery. We've got battery uh, battery and storage in there. These are, for those of you that didn't watch the other video, this is all oak shipping pallet material. Just found a shipping pallet and, uh, and made up some decking and then varnished it. And this is just leftover um, hemlock or fir, um, two by four ends that a friend had ripped off to get more dimensional lumber so i just used uh glues and brad nails and uh stuck them onto a plywood carcass to form this box so there's some cup holders that katie made you know in, in traditional british sports car style we're using lift the dot fasteners because we have a bunch of them and then uh what else oh added an exhaust pipe doesn't go anywhere but it's kind of fun you can put a safety flag in there it's got that little capper on the top so yeah that's that's pretty much it there's our riding flat car this there's a walkover seat you know like the old passenger cars i built one of those there's a side profile it's kind of out of position because that's the only way it fits and there's the the back that flips over this is all done with scrap material and i've got a couple truck sets left so if you guys have ideas on what to build uh say something in the comments be sure to like and subscribe that supports the channel. I'll never make money, as I said before, but but that's fun. It's, it's okay. So, and then we got the steam locomotive. We're gonna get that out in the summer. I need to put a test fire in it, and uh, we'll get that going. I really want to see how this dynamo sounds. I think it's gonna make the right noises for a steam locomotive. So, anyway, I hope you enjoy. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you on on answers, or I'll make something up.